What's up guys? Today I'll be recovering a hard drive with some scissors. No, just kidding. But seriously though, I'll be using scissors for something in this task. Um, I had this set for like seven years and uh, as I was working on a similar situation for the four terabyte uh, hard drive uh, that needed this procedure done on it, I snapped them. So I went out to Staples next door, picked up this same set of scissors that I had. Lifetime warranty. I like that because I'll get some new scissors as a replacement to the ones I broke. What am I going to do today? I'm going to be cutting up an old PCB from like, I don't know, from like a two and a half inch SATA drive um, just so that I can use a connector. Any connector from SATA could be used to get this done, it doesn't have to be attached to the PCB, but having it attached to the PCB actually helps because then you can secure it with some screws as I will show you in the video. The purpose of doing that is uh, on Western Digital Passports, as a lot of you may know, uh, there is no such thing as a SATA connector. There is a USB 3.0 or USB 2.0 uh, interface that was already automatically integrated into the circuit board. So, um, there are several ways that you can try to resolve issues with it using the uh, um, USB port, but I find that it's extremely, extremely uncomfortable. The technique that I use is a conversion technique. So uh, from USB interface, it's gonna go into SATA interface, and that will help me access uh, the service area and do necessary modifications to the um, firmware, sort of like a patch, to uh, um, let the drive work again. So Briefly, just to un explain what happens to these drives, uh, out, of the, out of the bloom, one day, your drive will get slow, uh, and it will stay slow until uh, slow response is resolved on it. What is a slow response? Well, slow response is kind of like a coma for the drive. It's not dead yet, and uh, it could be brought back with help of some, um, some modifications that could be done to the firmware. In order to do those modifications, you need to have vendor-specific access. So converting your drive to SATA is not necessarily going to resolve the problem for you completely. And there's another hidden obstacle on Western Digital Passport drives known as encryption. Some of these drives come encrypted, some of these drives don't have any encryption at all. I find that most passports will have encryption. Western Digital elements that look identical to Western Digital passports most of the time do not have encryption on them. Uh, but uh, whether there is an encryption or not, the problem is uh, mainly associated with uh, firmware that needs a little bit of patching. So unless you have tools that are able to modify that firmware, converting your drive to a SATA interface most likely is not going to resolve this issue. The problem is not the USB port that's on there. The problem is on disk and it needs to be cleaned up. So. Uh, by cleaned up, I don't mean like physically cleaned up, I mean like through manipulation equipment. Instead of using the whole PCB because it's just bulky, like I'm gonna cut it like right between those two lines right there. So cut it, I mean I'm gonna cut it like right around here. It almost cuts like cardboard. So I'll show you everything that would need to be done in order to convert this drive to SATA. It's not a big job. Uh, you do need to have a microscope, you do need to have a precise soldering iron to get this done, but it's very, very, very manageable if you have these tools at your disposal. So this is what the board looks like, and um, adaptation can be done in several ways. Now this drive has um, uh, 771800 zero one part number here in the middle. If you get a 771823 board, that would be uh, already prepared SATA version of this device. I have these uh, boards here somewhere, but today's video, I want to make it a bit more uh, interesting by actually showing how this conversion can be done manually. Uh, aside from uh, this little part or just the connector part itself, uh, you're going to need to uh, have this diagram and I have, I'll post this on my Instagram so if you guys want to follow me there, uh, check out this link, go there and it's going to be one of the most recent posts from this date. 
And the test points that we're going to need to use are E73, E73, You have a uh, fiberglass pen that would be even easier to prepare them. For some reason, they're a little oxidized here. But these are the um, four pads that we're going to need to use. The holes, sorry. So E73, E75, E72, and E71 are going to be is going to be our communication for the SATA connector, and um, we need. 5 volts only, which is going to be on the center 3. All right, so the power, we're going to take the power from the connector. This part here is what the 5 volt goes to. A few more things that are worth mentioning.
sit tight. Put this right on the drive. So this is what the device looks like when the sector is encrypted. And this is what that same sector looks like after the decryption algorithm is applied. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, the conversion is done so that the uh, firmware can be accessed easily and modified. This drive did have encryption. So even if the firmware didn't need to be modified, I wouldn't be able to access the data right away. Older drives like uh, 500, one terabyte, two terabyte drives, they use uh, a wide, wide variety of different part numbers on their boards. And because those drives had been in production for quite some time, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, these uh, SATA counterparts that could be purchased already, you know, they're already built and they're compatible. So in data recovery industry, it's not so uncommon to even have them in the uh, inventory all the time because these drives coming in a lot. Uh, but some of the drives, I still even use this technique. Today's, today, today's procedure was done just for demonstration that this is possible and it can be done this way. But uh, I just recently had to use that same technique to actually recover somebody's data because I do not have a board that is compatible with that USB uh, interface hard drive. This drive is right here. And this device is a 4 terabyte passport drive. 4 terabyte passport drive, SATA board, uh, they do exist, but they cost about 375 bucks for the working drive. I don't know. For me, take 20 minutes and put a connector on there to make it work just as effectively. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I will see you tomorrow. I'm sticking to the schedule still. I'm probably going to shoot two videos today so that one will be held for Sunday. I'll see you guys tomorrow around the same time.